few years that I wanted to make a video about that. We, electronic musicians, composers, producers, performers and enthusiasts have so much love for our analog and digital instruments. But many of us oftentimes overlook the importance of what I'm going to tell you. Now it's probably a good time to introduce myself. My name is Konstantin Gervis and you are watching Station 252. It's going to be a series of videos because I won't be able to put all the information I want to share with you into one episode. It's a huge subject, so let's start. What I want to talk about are the audio mixers, sound mixers, mixing consoles. From now on, I will just call them mixers to minimize the amount of minutes. It's not going to be a very detailed technical talk. I'm going to look at mixers from a point of view of a musician, specifically electronic musician, producer and performer. But before I talk about mixers in electronic music, let's talk about mixers in general. What are they? So the basic function of a mixer is mixing different audio signals together to a single output, mono, stereo or surround sound. Mixers also make it much easier to distribute audio signals around the studio. The more flexible the mixer, the easier it is to do that. Last but not least, mixers are a very important arrangement tool in certain styles of electronic music. Not all, but the styles that are dear to my heart, like techno, abstract experimental music or techno, dub, like techno, and techno, all require a mixer. Can you live without a mixer? Sure you can. Electronic music producer working without a mixer is like living without hands not fun at all. When I started studying sound engineering, that was when I really started learning about the mixers and using them, touching them, moving faders and stuff, with few exceptions. I've worked with pretty much every mixing console there is. But it doesn't really matter when you know one mixing console, you know them all. They are more or less working the same way. The only difference is the feature set and of course price and sound quality. Each channel, all those knobs, how do you know, how can you remember? And it's actually quite funny because what you see is multiples of exactly the same thing. So you have one channel multiple times. Now let's talk a little bit about the architecture of a mixer. A signal goes into mixer, it goes into the input, either microphone input or line input. To set the proper level into the channel, there is what is called a preamplifier or preamp. Next usually comes an equalizer. Types of equalizers found on mixers. Shelving EQ, low shelf, cuts or boosts below the center frequency. High shelf, cuts or boosts above the center frequency. Bell EQ, cuts or boosts around the center frequency. Mostly used for low mid and high mid or just the mid frequencies. On some mixers, low and high shelving equalizers can be switched into a bell response. Bell equalizers can be parametric with gain, frequency and Q factor. Q factor is the width of the frequency band that you are cutting or boosting measured in octaves. Think about it as poles on a normal synthesizer filter. Semi-parametric equalizers lack the Q factor, so the width of the bell is fixed. Having both low mid and high mid bands on an equalizer is always a big plus. It is way more usable than having just one mid-range band and way better than having a three band fixed frequency equalizer. In addition to an equalizer, there is almost always a high pass filter, mostly in form of a button that activates a fixed high pass filter placed right after the preamp and set around 75 Hz. 
in case you need to get rid of sub frequencies from your sound. On some mixers, that filter has a sweepable frequency on a knob. One of the most important features on a mixer that, at least for me, is always one of the deciding factors in choosing one are the auxiliary sense. Auxiliaries are special buses that can take your signal on a ride to an effects unit. Auxiliaries are either post-fader or pre-fader types. Pre-fader auxiliary can be used independent of the fader. The most common use for it is headphone and monitor mixes or effect sense in dub mixing. Post-fader auxiliaries are predominantly used for effects sense, but auxiliaries can also be used to send signals to recording devices. Here is a great example of a mixer with a good selection of auxiliary sense. Six auxiliary sense. They are color coded in pairs and also can be switched in pairs between pre-fader or post-fader. Now on the Dynasonic APB ProRec the auxiliary 5 and 6 not only can be switched between pre and post fader they also can operate as a stereo auxiliary send by engaging the stereo button auxiliary 6 becomes a level for both auxiliary 5 and 6 and auxiliary 5 knob becomes a pan pod for the auxiliary send but what is great about stereo auxiliary send is that they can be easily used with true stereo effects processor like the CDSP. But how does the auxiliary system work? So the signal goes from the preamp down through equalizer via the auxiliary sense to the channel fader from which it is sent to the mix bus. You can look at auxiliary just like an extra fader that sends the signal down the auxiliary bus. Each auxiliary send, auxiliary 1, auxiliary 2 and so on, are separate auxiliary buses. That's how you send your signal to, for example, reverbs or delays, recording devices and so on. Basically that's how it works. In pre-fader mode it does not matter how you set up your channel faders. They can be up, down, doesn't matter. The auxiliary send will function independently of the channel fader. In post fader, the auxiliary level set by the knob will be proportional to the channel fader. So you lower the channel fader, the signal that's sent out of the auxiliary bus will be lowered as well. It's up to you to decide which one is applicable for your particular application. Next thing you find on a mixer is a mute button. By pressing a mute button, you cut the signal from reaching the stereo bus. In some cases, any other bus as well. Not always, but that's mostly the case. And then there's a solo button. By pressing it, you can hear this particular channel in isolation or in headphones. Depends on the solo setting. And then a pan pod, a panorama control, so you either send your signal to the left channel or to the right channel or anywhere in between those. What about those weird strange channels on the mixer, like auxiliary returns? Auxiliary return has nothing to do with auxiliary send. Those just share similar names, but they are not in any way connected to each other. Usually they also have the same number, let's say you have six auxiliary sends and six auxiliary returns. The mixing manufacturers want us to use them as effects return. So let's say you use auxiliary six for reverb send and your reverb processor comes back on auxiliary return six. I personally never use auxiliary returns because I prefer to use actual normal channels for effects returns. And the reason is that I want to have a full control over those signals, like input gain, equalizers, auxiliary sends to send those signals to other effects, group assignments. I want to be able to record those signals separately and most of the time auxiliary returns do not allow any assignment other than assignment to the master pass.
Stereo channels are also common on mixing consoles. Stereo channel is nothing more than two inputs with one fader controlling both sides. Instead of a pump control, there is a balance control and usually a simplified equalizer. It's useful if you have a lot of stereo sources like drum machines, effects processors, keyboards and so on and so on. Of course you can use any two mono channels as a stereo channel. Groups. I love groups. Group buses are similar to auxiliary buses, but with an important difference. You assign a channel to a bus always after the fader and always with a button. It is a fixed level send. Sending signals to recording devices is the most common use for groups in the studio, but groups can also be used for submixing and group processing. In live sound, the groups are used to group multiple signals to control them with one or two faders. Master section on a mixing console is usually an overlooked part of the mixing, but it is nevertheless very important. Other than the master fader, and your group masters and your auxiliary masters, it also features solo buttons for auxiliary masters, assignment for your group's master solo level, headphone output with corresponding volume control and also have a master volume control for the monitors. In the next part of this video series, I will demonstrate the use of a mixer as an arrangement tool. Thank you for watching and keep on patching! Don't forget to mix your patches.